Hello and welcome to another episode of Relationship Alive. This is your host, Neil Satin. I had a great time this past weekend with the Gottmans live here in Portland, Maine. It was a great show with amazing questions and lively conversation with our guests and some exquisite music from Sarah Hallie Richardson and a couple women who were singing with her, making the most beautiful harmonies. So stay tuned for a way for you to get access to being able to see Relationship Alive Live, both our show with the Gottmans and the show that we did earlier in the summer with Terry Real. Um, I won't be able to tell you today how you're going to do that, but uh, stay tuned to the podcast or um, to the emails that you get from me. And uh, you'll be able to find out how to get access to all of that stuff. Also, uh, make sure that you check out our last episode with Vi Neufeld, if you haven't yet. She wrote a book that's all about how to get the most out of conflict, how to really use conflict to your benefit rather than shying away from it or seeing as it is something that's about you and the other person. It's all about how you get to grow within. So it was an awesome episode, episode 206. Make sure you check it out. Today, we're going to be talking about truth and our own truth and the ways that we are withholding from our partners and how to stop doing that. And uh, we're not going to be able to cover everything about that today. You could write an entire book about that, but we are going to cover some of the important points about ways that we hold ourselves back or that we feel like we're held back in our relationship. And uh, in order to ultimately be able to talk to your partner about this sort of thing, it is helpful to be really skilled at relationship communication. And to that end, I encourage you, if you haven't already, to download my free guide to my top three relationship communication secrets. These are the kinds of things that if you do, you'll be able to have challenging conversations with your partner and stand the best chance of staying connected while you're doing that. So to download the guide, just visit neilsatin.com slash relate, or you can text the word relate to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. Now, Relationship Alive is my labor of love for you about love and if you're finding the show to be helpful for you in your life or for people that you love please consider a donation to help ensure that we can continue every little bit counts and you can choose whatever feels right for you to make a contribution just visit neilsatin.com slash support or text the word support to the number 33444 and follow the instructions. And this week I would like to thank Mira, Joseph, Ruthanna, Marie, Timothy, Karina, David, Angie, Sylvia, Layla, and Drew. Thank you all so much for your generous support of Relationship Alive. Lastly, if you're looking for a place where you can connect with other people who listen to the podcast and be in a safe space to talk about your relationship, come join the Relationship Alive community on Facebook, where we have well over 3,000 people who are gathered to elevate the discourse about what's possible in relationships. All right, I think that's it for the moment. Oh, no, one last thing. If you have a question that you want me to answer on the podcast, Record yourself asking the question and email it to me. You can do that by sending it to questions at relationshipalive.com. Okay, that's it. Let's dive in. I'm going to level with you here. If you're in a situation in your relationship where you cannot be you, where you feel like you're holding back important parts of who you are, then that is simply not a sustainable arrangement. It can last. It can last for quite a while, actually, with increasing amounts of resentment or questions about whether or not the relationship is right for you. And in many ways, those are the kinds of relationships that I think we often settle for, where we can't fully be 
who we are or where we've decided that a certain amount of personal compromise is just okay. It's just what we have to live with because uh, who we really want to be, we don't think our partners can handle. Or maybe our partners have shown us that they can't handle it. At least that's what we think is going on. So over time, we can go through this process where we become a little dimmer and a little dimmer. And it can happen in ways that you're not even aware of. So you can feel like, well, in most ways, that's not happening for me. In most ways, I'm thriving. In most ways, everything is great. But then there might be these key little areas in your life that keep popping up into your psyche to let you know that there are places where you have to hold back, where you can't be fully honest or truthful, where you have questions that you want to ask, but you're afraid that you won't get answers. In a way, this episode is a follow-up to the episode I did a few weeks back about how to stop controlling each other. I think that was episode... Um, what episode was that? That was episode 203. So if you want to listen to that episode, there's a lot in there about the ways that we create agreements that maybe no longer serve us, ways that we've accommodated each other. So you can see how these things might relate to each other. I wanted to go one step further where you took this time to get in touch with what's happening within you, with where the places are that you're starting to develop resentments or where the places are within you that you feel like you're holding back or where the places are within you that you feel like you have tried to be open and honest with your partner and it hasn't gone so well. And so you've just kind of closed yourself off to those things. And maybe even most importantly, I want you to identify the places within you that need healing. You know, something is maybe bothering you from your past that you haven't quite resolved yet. And think about whether there are obstacles that you perceive in your relationship to getting the healing that is required for you so that you can be free of those things from your past and just move on. But sometimes we can get in this kind of puzzling situation where we're held hostage by the past because we're being held hostage by the present. Like there's some obstacle in the present to dealing with whatever it is that we experienced in the past. And that's still there for us, still haunting us. So it's easy to feel like you're trapped. And in fact, one way that you might confront this for yourself is to ask yourself, you know, if my partner weren't in the picture, uh, what would I, what would I take on for my life? What would I take on for myself? So this is putting aside all of those like grass is greener fantasies, you know, like, oh, I'd, you know, have this kind of lover or this person who would meet me perfectly. This isn't about that. Um, and, and I want to be super clear with you that this exercise isn't about detaching from your partner or envisioning a, a better partner than your partner. That's not what this is. This is about getting in touch with what you would do for you if your partner weren't around. What would you do for yourself? What are the curiosities that you have that you would explore? What are the woundings that you have that you would heal? What are the ways that you feel life calling you to grow and to show up and to play and to experiment with that you feel like you don't have the space for in your current situation? What could you do if you didn't have the worry of your relationship and you didn't have the time commitment of your relationship and instead you had all that space for yourself and it didn't involve other people? And I, I guess I'll make one exception to that, which is if you have children or um, family that need your attention and you feel like you're not giving them your full attention, then that's that's permissible. But I'm I definitely don't want you to get sidetracked with a like jumping ship so that you can be with someone else mentality. That is not where this exercise is meant to go. 
So uh, it doesn't mean you can't entertain that on your own time, I guess. But um, recognize that for what it is, that it's um, so easy to imagine the perfect other person. But reality is that no other person is perfect. Um, so you may find yourself with a person that doesn't have the problems that your current partner has or where you don't have the problems in relationship that you have with your current partner. But undoubtedly, there will be other problems. You get to choose the joys with a person. You also get to choose your problems. And sometimes you don't get to choose them because they don't come up until later. So sometimes it's a blessing, actually, to have a full understanding of the problems that you're choosing with the person that you're with. That in and of itself is a topic for another episode. And we'll get to that. We'll need to get to that. But in the meantime, let's come back to this question of you. And the ways in which you might envision thriving if you were just you or if your partner weren't interfering in some way. Or now let's go a step further and say, what are the things that you would bring to your partner if you could? And they could be in that list that we just came up with. Or there might be something new here, something relational. So it might be something about the way that you conduct your lives together, your finances, your domestic fitness, like getting the the laundry done or the dishes done, that sort of thing. It might have to do with your sex life with your partner, what kinds of things that you're experimenting with or how often you'd like to have sex or how often you'd like to not be having sex or or, or. I mean, it can be any number of possibilities here. These are kind of like your relational aspirations. And in this moment, I want you to get really clear on the ones that you feel are things that you can't bring to your partner that that just won't go so well. Maybe it's because you've tried in the past. Uh, maybe it's because you've never tried. You're scared to. Maybe it's because it's a recent discovery of yours and you haven't had a chance to. So just take this moment to and get clear on what those things are. And what we're going to do next is find a path to your feeling empowered around actually getting to experience those things here and now, regardless of the relationship that you're in. And... That's something we'll do after we've had a moment to talk about this week's sponsors, who each have a special offer for you. Our first sponsor for today is Noemi, and they have an incredible offer of $75 off just for you. So listen up. If Amazon Prime and Tiffany's had a baby, it would be Noemi with their exquisite, beautiful jewelry handcrafted and made to last a lifetime. It's perfect to wear today, and it will also be something that your family will treasure as an heirloom far into the future. Noemi jewelry is handcrafted in the finest materials, reclaimed 18-karat gold, conflict-free stones, and lab-grown diamonds, and it's all priced as fairly as possible because they eliminate the middleman. They ship to you overnight for free so that you can try your jewelry on, and you have up to 60 days to return it for free with a full refund. So trying something from their site to see how it feels on you and looks on you is completely risk-free. It's a super easy experience, and I also love how they make it simple to let someone know exactly what items you would like, because they have a drop-a-hint feature, which makes Noemi perfect for gift-giving without worrying about something tacky showing up on your door. It's something I particularly appreciate about them because their jewelry is truly unique and you can tell just how much they care about what they're creating and what they're giving to you, even in the way that they package it. And when you open up the box, you can tell that things are just like placed just so, so that you have the perfect experience when you open the box and see the amazing piece and try it on. You can literally feel the quality under your fingertips. And as I mentioned, they do have a very special offer for you. You can head to hellonoemi.com. That's the word hello, followed by N-O-E-M-I-E 
Alive.com and use the coupon code ALIVE for $75 off your order today. That's $75 off with the coupon code ALIVE at HelloNoemi.com. Check it out for yourself or use their drop a hint feature so that you can send exactly what you'd like to someone who might just want to get that for you. Now, I don't know about you, but it's important to me to smell good without overpowering other people with fragrance or with my own natural fragrance and also without subjecting myself to any harsh chemicals. And that's where our second sponsor, Native Deodorant, comes in with fewer ingredients that are easy to pronounce and found in nature. And Native Deodorant is also completely safe, effective, and aluminum-free. They offer free returns and exchanges in the USA, so there's no risk to try. And Native Deodorant comes in a wide variety of subtle, enticing scents for men and women, along with an unscented and baking soda-free varieties if you're uh, if you have sensitivities. Now, if you've heard me talk about Native before, then you know that I put them to the test by trying out their unscented variety without having a shower. And I found that it not only worked right away to neutralize any odors that might have been there, but it was actually still working at the end of the day. And like I mentioned, they also have a special offer for you. For 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code ALIVE during checkout. That's 20% off your first purchase when you visit nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code ALIVE. Our third and final sponsor for today has a special offer for you to help you get exactly the kind of support that you need as you're creating a web of support for yourself that we often talk about here on the show. It is also great to have this kind of support when you are trying to figure out what your truth is and exactly what's keeping you, what's holding you back from being in your truth in your relationship. One way that allows you to connect with a professional counselor in an online environment that's safe and private is today's sponsor, BetterHelp. With BetterHelp, you can get help on your own time and at your own pace. Along with scheduling video or phone sessions, you can also chat and text with your therapist. They're affordable, and financial aid is available for those who qualify. So whether it's anxiety, depression, your truth, your relationship, stress, grief, dealing with trauma, whatever it is that you are needing support around, definitely consider BetterHelp as a way to help you transform all the places where you feel stuck. And best of all, it's a truly affordable option because as a Relationship Alive listener, you get 10% off your first month with the discount code ALIVE. So why not get started today? Just go to betterhelp.com slash alive, fill out the questionnaire that they have to help them assess your needs and to get you matched with a counselor that you will love. That's betterhelp.com slash alive. And thank you, BetterHelp, Noemi, and Native Deodorant for your support of thriving, sweet-smelling, well-adorned, and well-supported relationships here on Relationship Alive. Now, let's get real for a moment. I mean, of course, that's what we've been doing this whole time is getting real. But I want to get real with the fact that it might very well be true that some of these aspects of you are incompatible with your relationship. That may very well be true. And by the way, if you're not in a relationship, then if this is also an interesting exercise, right? Because you get to see all the ways in which you are holding yourself back from being you in the world. And by saying what I just said, I, I also gave you a little hint that in many respects, you are probably holding yourself back. It's your story about the situation that you're in that's actually keeping you from bringing your truth fully to the situation that you're in. So this isn't something that you just step forward into uh, without a bit of care, without a bit of thought. So it's not like I want you to listen to this episode and then, you know, storm into the next room with your 
partner and just say like uh, I'm not going to take this anymore like here are all these ways that I've been sacrificing myself for our relationship and I can't do that anymore and I'm going to be me and you're going to like it damn it like you can't do that that that's not the way that this is going to unfold because more likely than not all of these ways that you're compromising yourself are part of the dance that you and your partner have created that's actually helped you get to where you are it's kept you it's kept you from falling apart in some respects. So this is all just really useful information. If you don't address it, it can definitely continue to build resentments. And in the end, it could be a reason why you and your partner don't end up staying together. And it could be that one of these things that you've uncovered, as I was just saying, is something that represents a core value difference between you and your partner that isn't resolvable in a way that allows you to stay together. Now, even the Gottmans talk about how every couple has their share of unresolvable problems. I think, in fact, the other night with uh, Julie and John, I think they said something like 60% of problems that couples have are actually unresolvable. If I'm remembering that right, then whoa, that's like a huge number. So if you can have 60% of your problems be unresolvable and yet still be in a loving, happy, thriving relationship using the Gottman method or some other method, then the odds are pretty good that there are ways that you can learn to coexist with each other in ways that are actually life-giving uh, when these kinds of things come up. So if you have something that's unresolvable, it doesn't necessarily mean that you and your partner are finished. This is my somewhat backwards way of giving you a little bit of encouragement here that the odds are good that some of these things you've uncovered will be scary to you in the context of your relationship or potentially scary for your partner. And that's probably why you've gone dark or dim around these particular elements. So... You want to set a context with your partner for having a conversation about this stuff. And hopefully you've been working all along on creating safe conversations with your partner. Uh, if you haven't, then I definitely encourage you to listen to my episodes on communication, to download my communication guide, to uh, take the communication course, which is still in beta, but uh, I think we might have a flash sale on it pretty soon before we move it ahead into its more finalized version and uh, get some good feedback from our beta group participants. And big thank you goes out to all of you. And um, yeah, so creating a way to actually communicate with your partner that keeps you both safe is crucial to being able to talk about these kinds of things. In the short term, it's helpful for you to just get really related to them. So you might revisit this inquiry for yourself several times over the coming week or over the coming month or months so that you can get really familiar with what is true for you. And you can also get really familiar with the ways that certain things seem true, but might not be true. So you can open yourself up to the possibility of, uh, well, these are, this is just how I see things now, but I'm open to seeing things differently. But this is my truth now. I think that can sometimes take a little bit of the sting out of this journey for our truth, because if it feels like this is our indelible, unalterable truth, then that can sometimes put us in a bind. And some of these things might be that for you, but I doubt that all of them are. So some suggestions. Um, when you do decide that it's time to bring one of these things up with your partner, and I wouldn't suggest doing it all at once, then choose something that you think might be easier. I would start there. And when you bring this to the conversation, then you might want to ensure that you've framed it in such a way that it's not making it your partner's responsibility. Like, for instance, it would be really easy to go into a conversation like this saying, you know, honey, I've been giving a lot of thought to us and our relationship, and I'm seeing how 
there are things about our relationship that are holding me back and I'm not able to be me because of you. And that, and that needs to change. Just to be clear, that is an example of how not to approach this conversation. It's a great way to trigger your partner and ensure that it doesn't go well. And actually, before you even get to the place where you're having this conversation, I invite you to really be clear about whether it's true that you even have to have a conversation. Maybe some of these things are things you could actually bring into your life in a totally transparent, visible way. Um, Maybe it's not true that you needed to be holding yourself back that way. Maybe you just need to take a stand for certain aspects of yourself and be that. That's totally possible. I do not encourage you to go into hiding about these aspects of yourself to be like, well, I'm just going to take care of this for myself and, you know, I'm just going to not tell my partner about it. I don't encourage you to do that. Um, every relationship is different. And if you're considering that sort of thing, I would talk to your therapist about it or talk to the talk to people who, you know, can look at a situation objectively and support you more often than not. Your integrity is going to be best served by being able to be open and candid. And trust me, this is a lesson that I have learned the hard way. So take it from me. It's easier in the long run to just be open about it and to take that risk rather than to hide it and hope that it all kind of works itself out later. At some point, I'll tell you more about that. In the meantime, you've gotten clear on your truth. You've taken the opportunity to just step into your truth a little bit more to figure out what's truly true and what's a little malleable. And then maybe it's time to talk to your partner. And there's a lot to cover here that I'm not going to be able to cover in this episode because I want to keep this short and actionable. And if nothing else, I want it to get you thinking. But I want to give you a few clues here for how to have this conversation. Probably the most important one is to be able to enter any conversation like this with your partner with a sense of like, okay, how am I going to keep my partner safe? One way to keep your partner safe is to say, I'm going to talk to you about some things that are really challenging for me. And I want you to know that one of the reasons that I want to talk to you about this is because I have faith in us that we can figure this out. And it may be challenging to hear. It may be triggering for you, but Deep down, I know that there's a really good chance that if you can hear me and if you can just get that this is just my truth right now and I'm looking for a way to be honest with you and to let you know what's going on with me and to figure out collaboratively between the two of us how we're going to what we're going to do with this information, then hopefully we can both be here and be present with each other. And, and I'm going to want to hear from you too. Okay. So you're setting the stage that this conversation, even if it's about something dicey or something that's been beneath the surface for a long time, that you're bringing it to the, to the forefront with a, uh, with the intention of it bringing the two of you closer. And then remember, you're not going to make this about your partner. So it's going to be something like this, babe or honey lamb or whatever you call your partner. I've been thinking a lot about this thing that is really true for me and realizing that I don't know how to be this or how to do this or how to honor this aspect of me in the context of our relationship. And I'm telling you this because it's really important to me. And I've realized that if I don't give voice to this particular thing, then I'm just going to be resentful. And keeping it in the dark is just giving it more power. So somehow this needs to get resolved, but the resolution can't be that I just forget about it or that I just pretend that it's not important to me. So here's what it is, and then you would say what it is, and then you would say, you know, can we work together to figure this out. 
Do you have questions about this that can help you get more clear on what I'm even saying? Because if it's something that's a little triggering, then your partner will probably hear it in a somewhat distorted way. And so you want to give them an opportunity to just ask you questions and to, for them to get really clear. And if you sense that the, the level of activation is getting a little heightened, in other words, you're getting triggered or they're getting triggered, then you could suggest like, hey, like, let's just take a break from this conversation for a little bit. Let's take a walk. Let's have some ice cream, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, let's, let's engage in some emotional eating. Um, let's do something to just come back to ourselves and then we can come back to the conversation. And you might even thank them and say, hey, it just feels good to be able to tell you about this. And, and I just trust that eventually we'll figure it out. One way or another, we'll figure it out. And know that I love you, I care about you. And it's been hard for me to not be able to, to be open with you about this thing. So that's me getting you started on how to have that conversation. And there are any number of places that it can go from there. But hopefully this is inspiring you to look honestly at your truth, to look honestly at the ways that you've been withholding or selling yourself short or not asking the questions that you need to ask or not being vulnerable or taking the risks that you need to take for your relationship to be truly thriving and alive. And hopefully you're feeling really empowered around looking honestly about whether or not your relationship is truly holding you back and ways to broach that conversation with your partner that have the best chance of success. So that is it for today's episode. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week where we will be joined by Paula Hall, who is one of the world's leading experts in sex addiction. It's a very enlivening and intriguing and interesting conversation that we're going to have. So I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. And in the meantime, if this brings up stuff for you or you have questions, reach out in our Facebook community, the Relationship Alive community, or you can email me, neilius, N-E-I-L-I-U-S, at neilsatin.com. As I've said before, I cannot usually respond to you, but I will read your email and I'll do my best to address whatever it is in a future episode. It's always a pleasure to be here with you, and I'm so grateful for your tuning in to Relationship Alive. I will see you next week.